we go. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Typical Skeptic Podcast. I have another fascinating guest with me today. I have with me Deborah. She goes by the Peculiar Daughter. This was recommended to me by my friend Shannon. Shannon watches her channel and she watches my channel and she thought it would be a good idea for me to um, get her on my show. And then I started tuning into Deborah's content and it's amazing. She covers a lot of great and uh, and uh, and so Peteris, who interacts with the other world and the beings who reside there, the goal of these interactions is to assist in the balancing of the world of the soul on this planet, which is affected by all that live on it. She discusses the other world, ancient wisdom, new earth, ascension, energy updates, spiritual awakening, animism, and much more. She's an amazing community at www.patreon.com slash the peculiar daughter. And the website is www.thepeculiardaughter.com. And I want to give her a big warm welcome to the show. Deborah, thank you for coming on. How are you? I'm good. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it, this is going to be awesome. Um, So, okay. So for, for the audience, it's in your bio, it said you're a seerist, which I, I guess that's somewhat of like a psychic or a medium. Um, um, can yeah, you, so can I came that? up. So I don't really like to have a title, but other people need the title, I guess. So. It's kind of what I came up with. And it just means that I can see into the other world. That's all that that really means. In the past, it would have been, I would have been labeled, you know, a witch or whatever, because um, I I go in my spirit body and, and I go to the other world. And they all often come into my world and interact with me. When, um, when but, you say the other world, where do you mean like other dimensions? Or, yeah, so it's a it's a it's a parallel dimension. And in the past, it would have been called, uh, like in the olden days, they referred to it as like the Fey realm or um, it, it's, so I talk a lot about the other world. In the past, it was called the underworld. So inside the earth is actually where everything is. So it's a really, because of organized religion, we've meant, we are, kind of programmed to think that everything is up and out and in the sky and God's up there and all that. But in ancient tradition and from my experience of, of leaving my body and, and traveling, I'm going inside the earth. And so this is where we go when we die. We come up through it when we are born. This is where the astral realm is. It's also where the heavenly realms are. So when you go into really ancient indigenous cultures it's always talking about the worlds that are inside the earth or under our feet but people don't like to you know the anything under our feet has been demonized by organized religion so i i hesitate to use the underworld because people automatically think it's something bad but it's where we go and it's where we emerge to on the surface earth so, um, yeah, well, that's I mean, where I, so yeah, I, I just avoid the word, which too has become kind of convoluted and contaminated in a way. Um, and it's not really how I, what traditional ancient witchcraft is about. So I just go by Cirrus because. Yeah. I've always had an affinity towards like the craft, you know, I mean, yeah. like even going back to like when I was a kid and I was, I'm 43 and I saw that movie with, um, I can't remember her name, but like, I mean, I've always like, I used to listen to the witch that used to come on Art Bell all the time. She was a, she was a Strega witch, which was, a, it's like an Italian, but uh -huh. her name was Evelyn Paglini. She was amazing. And then, and that kind of got me into like wanting to learn about that kind of yeah. stuff. Like, you know, so, um, yeah, mine would be like primal witchcraft. So like knowing herbs and working with crystals and kind of everything that you see on YouTube, that's not really the bulk of what in traditionally a witch would do. A witch would be able to detach and go in their spirit body to the other world, the dimensions, because that's where um, the wise beings reside. That's where ascended masters and, and, uh, you know, Shangri-La and the heavenly realms, that's where they were. And you also develop what are called familiar spirits. And I know a lot of too in kind of the new agey um, witchcraft, they think it's their pet, but a familiar spirit is not, it's an ally that you have with 
the other world because we don't really know our our way around and so it kind of helps you and sometimes they, they even are like can become like a spirit spouse and you have this relationship with them i mean it gets really deep but yeah that's basically what it is is um you're accessing and working with beings some of them used to be human and they've transcended the human kingdom and now they're guides for other people ready to transcend the human kingdom and then there's beings that have never been human there's uh we have a lot of con you know uh, contact with nature beings and there's so many kind of beings in in what we call the other world and there's worlds inside worlds and and all that so yeah, yeah, it's so crazy because like we're so like, I don't know if this was done by design. I don't know if we're in some kind of prison planet, but like this is all so like shielded from us. If oh, I, it like, is. It's, it's like, well, like most of the like 90%, I would say, of the population, maybe that's changing now because of the awakening that's happening, but is like kind of blocked off from this stuff, myself included. Like I can't yeah. See, I'm very intuitive and I'm somewhat psychic, but I can't see into other worlds. Like, I'd love to, you know what I mean? I've even tried like scrying, you know what I mean? Like, cause yeah. I tried and, and to, to do it, but like, all I did was I stared into this black mirror I have down here for like an hour and it didn't do anything. I mean, I, I, I did, I probably should have tried a little bit harder, but still what I'm trying to say is like, I, I don't know if it's just something that you have to work on over time. Um, to these worlds yeah. Or, or maybe but, some people haven't I mean, I can, I can tell you my story is, um, I mean, I was never normal when I was young. Um, I used to, I still have it from the seventies, a book that I called the gnome notebook. So I guess I was into nature spirits back then, but I would list all my friends and they'd have a symbol and a color. So apparently I was reading their energy and their aura back then, but I didn't know that's what I was doing. Um, and then, uh, you know, I just want to fit in and be normal. And so that kind of stuff just kind of went by the wayside. But what happened to me um, was in 2009. I wasn't spiritual. I didn't do yoga. I didn't do any type of practice at all. And um, I had an experience where I was... I felt I was forcefully taken out of my body. So um, I had something coming at the back of my neck. And all I was saying to myself is I couldn't move. I was paralyzed. I was awake. And um, I just know that something is going to kill me. It's coming at the back of my neck. And I could see it because clairvoyantly, I could see it. And it was like a pointed, almost like a drill bit. And then later I find out that that is a chakra back there called the Atlas chakra. The Egyptians would call it the mouth of God. And so this is a dormant chakra that can be opened, but when it opens, like be ready for it. Like I had tremendous headaches and I mean, it's, it's intense when it opens. Um, but I was pulled out, yanked out of my body. I went to now what I, what I know is described as called as Avicii, where you're put into, it could be described as the void. A lot of people talk about that. Have you heard people say I went to the void? Or people talk about the void, yeah. Yeah, I, I so I there. went there and there's absolutely nothing. So you, I was there by myself and and there's no sound, there's no emotion. It's complete blackness. Um, and... For me, I know some people say, oh, they found found comfort in it. But for me, it was terrifying because I was just alone and, and there was absolutely nothing there. And so then I fought to get back to my body and I was, uh, I got out of the void or whoever pulled me out, whatever force it was the other world. It was an initiation from the other world now that I know, but what I'm describing is, is how this all started for me. And then I was in my spirit body on my ceiling, like scrambling, I'm looking at my body <laughs> on the bed and I'm scrambling to get back into it any way that I could, I couldn't figure out. I had never even known about any of this kind of stuff, never contemplated it. Um, and so finally I was able to get back in my body, but I still couldn't move. And then they yanked me out again and I fought it. 
so I, and I was, because I kind of have that rebellious kind of thing. I'm like, nobody takes me out of my body without my permission. Right. So it was, it was a very brutal wake up call. Um, and of course I went the medical route. So I thought, oh my God, I have a brain tumor. You know, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know what was going. I didn't go to the spiritual thing at all. So I went and got a CAT scan done and I got an MRI done. Um, and it came back. I would, I, I, the, what I told the doctors, uh, when I saw the report, it, I'm like, what did I tell them why I wanted this MRI? And it said that headaches, which I was having because of this chakra opening, but also seeing visual anomalies. And, uh, I didn't know what else to say. And nothing was found in my brain. And so I went and got my eyes checked for glaucoma or something, because after that happened, that's when I could see stuff and I could see holograms. Is this when um, you're seeing auras as well? And you're probably- Yeah, and but the thing is, is I was seeing pictures in my room and, and they were complete just holograms. And so they would make up a picture. And now, now like this was in 2009. So now I found out what all those were, but at the time I didn't know what was going on. It was just, I was afraid to go to sleep at night. You know, I didn't know what was going on. So then after all the medical, I, it, I found out it was nothing medical. I, I was, I have a high enough IQ to know there's something going on then from a spiritual aspect. And so that's when, you know, there was no YouTube back then. There was nothing on the internet. I knew nothing about chakras or Kundalini or any of that kind of stuff. So then slowly I started educating myself and, and I love the name of your channel because I was so skeptical about all of this. I didn't go and just be like, oh, I'm so spiritual and I can leave my body and everything. I was scared and, and I was having interactions with beings and they were coming in my room and I was going there and I didn't know how I was doing it. And, and, um, it was, it was, you know, not pleasant. And, and that is, and slowly I was able to, and then more information came out and then I would have to go back to really ancient, ancient like documents or the beings would tell me what was going on. And so I, there's some souls that are, this is their fate where you fill this role. Okay. And so you, but I feel like I was forced to be in this position. And so I don't like that. So I, again, that's my personality. Um, but I've come to, I've resolved that. And I've come to understand that this is just, it is what it is. So um, yeah, I've educated myself a lot. And the reason that I started my channel was because, um, I mean, let me go back. So I, I was skeptical about chakras and all this kind of stuff. And I couldn't understand new age because a spirit, I, I think a true spiritual awakening is very difficult. It's not like the skies open up and the, there's sun everywhere and rainbows and, and you're like, I'm enlightened. It's not like that. It's, it's very traumatizing. Your world falls apart. Everything you thought you knew was a lie. You get very angry that we don't know this as humans, that this could possibly happen, right? And this information has been suppressed through what I feel is the Roman Catholic Church when they went around um, under the guise of colonializing and all that. It was really to convert and suppress all this information. And yeah, so I'll just add, like, I, I, you, know, I, 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 you, you remind me of, like, a, a lot of the stuff that you talk about reminds me of, like, people I watch, like, Matt LaCroix, Robert Seffer, like, I, and, and, and I've even noticed you have a couple of their videos on your playlist yeah. on your channel, so you're, 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 I think, I feel like you're, you're, you're under, you're, what you're in, you have really good information, yeah. like, you know, yeah. plus, plus you're, you're taking, you're not only taking that, you're, so you're taking that information, what resonates with you and like, but you also have your own information from being able to see into the other world, which I think is fascinating. So yeah. you're able to kind of merge both worlds and like probably take what's bet what you think is best and what people need to know, and then put it out there for, I don't know. Right. How, is that kind of what you do? Um, yeah. So I don't, 
the I mean, I mostly watch travel YouTube channels because I don't really <laughs> want to watch other teachers or anything that influences me. And then I, I just want to keep the information I get from the other world and these beings pure. So people always ask me, what about this teacher or whatever? And I'm like, I don't comment or whatever. Matt Matthew LaCroix is a researcher. So he's not so much like he's waking people up to our true history and and the actual creation of humanity. And now I knew about the Anunnaki and all this history before Matthew came out with all these videos, but I never wanted to talk about it because I am RH negative and I I agree with Matthew LaCroix on everything except when he kind of insinuates that the the elite and the families in charge and the Rockefellers and the um, Rothschilds are RH negative. I don't think that. There was um, RH negative. If you're from, especially the serpent bloodline, you have no interest in that kind of stuff. You don't have that impulse for greed and control. You're more you're more concerned with spiritual liberation than that kind of stuff. And so, and that goes back to the donation of Constantine, Constantine that was a fraudulent document that gave the Pope the power to assign kings. And in the past, it was this Anunnaki bloodline. And they were more like priest kings. They weren't like tyrants and greed and all that kind of stuff. And so, who he really assigned was more of like the merchant class um, people that wanted to own land and money and all that. So it went that direction. And as we know, the, it was very corrupt at that time. And so they can prove that this document's fake. Um, even Wikipedia says it's a fake document. It's just from the, they didn't use that language back then at that time. And, and it, it's just a forged document. So, Which so document are you talking I, about? I think that the Which... ruling families that came in were not of this bloodline. And I know he kind of insinuates that they are. So that's my only thing that I don't agree with, but everything else he's so spot on. Yeah. I've had him on my show. I, I like talking to him. I mean, like, it's like when I first had my, well, here's my, here's a little bit about me. I'll tell you, like I was, um, <clears throat> like I said, I was a huge Art Bell fan when I was a kid and I'm sure you know who Art Bell was. Yeah. He was like the, you know, but then like, you know, like as anybody else in my twenties and thirties, I kind of got away from it. And then in 2016, I had a real reawakening, but it was like, I started getting into the paranormal. I started listening to Art Bell again, but then I was, I was always like kind of into history, you know, and I was, I was just watching, I think I was watching some videos on Alexander the Great or something, uh -huh. you know, cause I was always fascinated with Alexander the Great. I think I might've had a past life as someone in his army. I don't think I was him. But I think I was somewhere around him because also, you know, in my background, I'm Lebanese and I'm Greek and Italian. So, you know, I have that Mediterranean. So, and I always, I also have this theory that I think maybe we reincarnate into similar bodies or similar heritages. Yeah, I theory. bet you, it, he could have been an ancestor too. I don't know how far back you've done your ancestry. I haven't but, done that far. Okay, because so, you're, this is, goes into ancestor work, but they can kind of, they still live in our blood and our DNA. And so that's why sometimes you have an affinity towards certain people. So, yeah. So what, what ended up happening was I was watching, I came across Matt's video on the Eagle and the serpent. That was like one of the first videos that I saw and that, that kind of woke me up and I was like, wow. And then I emailed him that day and I was like, who is this? This is back in 2016 or 2017. Uh -huh. I was like, who's Anki and Enlil. And I was just like, so fascinated. And then from then on, it was just like this, I just dug so far into like Anunnaki knowledge. I mean, you know, I mean, I've even had Jason Brashears on my show. I'm sure you know who he is. Who he I has don't know who he is. Different, oh, he, he, he does a channel called Archaics. He has a different theor theory completely, excuse me, on, on the Anunnaki. Like, it seems like some people fall in line with the, with the story. And then some people have different theories as to who they were and what they were. But I mean, so that's kind of how I got into the whole Anunnaki thing. But like, um, it's always interesting hearing different people's knowledge and stuff. I can't remember where I was going with that. Well, oh, I wanted to ask you about this. What is the Anunnaki Grail Code? I've never heard of that. Well, it, it it's kind of, this is the serpent line where 
it's we kind of had a belief where we do unto others as they do unto us and as priest kings that's how they treated there was a difference they were left as guides these the there was beings that had more anunnaki blood and they were able to communicate with the other dimensions the anunnaki just come from another dimension and they can become solid um that has happened to me probably with three beings where they can become solid they look just like a human so that happens to me occasionally which freaks me out but um so there was that code but the humans that they were to be the guides of didn't honor it back and they actually there was a big killing off of the anunnaki bloodline and and um we we went out of balance after that so it was just always this code of of doing what's best for the community um you know, doing unto others as they do unto you. That's how they treated each other. And they applied that to humans that maybe weren't as quite as evolved or understood that concept. And there was total integrity and honesty at all times. There was no lying. There was no um, greed and selfishness. It's just this code of conduct, I guess you want to say, more of like a moral code. And this is the serpent bloodline. I this is the bloodline that that I descend from. So I didn't know all this, but I had so much, um, so many like <sighs> interactions, and I've been before an Anunnaki council, and um, they were the ones that when I had a pre birth memory that would was telling me why I was incarnating. Um, and so again, when we first wake up, we have, when we incarnate, we get our memories swiped because we're incarnating with a new emotional body and a mental body and our old ones have all our old memories. And so when we incarnate, we have brand new that, so we can't remember anything, but when I'm in the other world, I know how to do things and I don't know how I know, but it's just because I'm in a different consciousness when I'm there, but I do, do have interactions with them. Um, Anki has had several incarnations and gone by several different names. And uh, so it's, it, it was just interesting discovering all this. And the only reason I even went down that route is because I get procedures done on me all the time like energetic procedures and working with plasma and people have even witnessed this. And um, there was a comment made about my blood and there was a chromosome difference between a negative and, or that's what I am. Um, and let's say RH positive blood. And so that's when I went down this blood route of what is this RH negative, you know, all about. And that's when I started discovering this whole Anunnaki thing. And then it made sense with all the councils that I was in front of and and all that. So I, I th there's this demonization of them, but I can see where it's coming from. But there, there's also a force of good and they are our creators. So we have to kind of reconcile that in some way. Yeah, I was going to ask you, so people, some people have told me that, because I'm O negative, and some people have told me that the O negative is similar to RH negative, but because they say it's It rare, is, it's, but, it's the same thing, it's RH negative. Because it's, because it, it, RH negative just means without the rhesus factor, so yeah. O negative would be a type of blood without the rhesus factor, right? Yeah, so at one time, now... I was told that that we're going to go back to everyone being RH negative. I don't know how long that's going to take. So I think at one time we did have like every, whatever, I mean, humanity was much smaller at that time. But even Matt talks about, Matthew LaCroix talks about they downgraded us um, in some way. And they injected somehow altered the dna and injected kind of this monkey dna in this is where they get the rusus negative dna or correlation into humanity and so um 
it was actually seen as a downgrade. And so when they did that, it cut cut that part of humanity off from being clairvoyant and clairaudient and, and all that type of stuff. It was kind of a downgrade because Enki gave created humans with all these gifts. And then Enlil was didn't want that. They he wanted more just like, just do what you're told. I we need to terraform the earth and we need to do this and do that. But when you have kind of gods in human flesh, it's hard to do that. And so that's where this whole battle came in. And then eventually the downgrade happened because I don't know because of the conflict or whatever. And that's why I kind of go, I'm like, how else could they have done it except injecting it? And so that's why I'm not into getting injections yeah. <laughs> in this day and age. <laughs> yeah. One thing, the thing that you brought up was, uh, and you, you wrote, you talked about this in your videos was the serpent knowledge and the cult of the serpent. Like, you see, I, I mean, like, if you look at, like, Enki and then Nishida, like, it seems like they spread their serpent knowledge from, like, e you know, like, Sumeria to Egypt to maybe Mesoamerica. There's, like, yeah. signs of the serpent all throughout those pyramids, and, like, it's in ingrained in, like, all the, the megaliths and all, all the, all everything. It's just, like, it's kind of, and, you know, even the pyramid at Chichen Itza, where, yeah. you know, the serpent goes down at the, at the, the equinox and everything. So, like, um, do you think the serpent was demonized? Because here's, here's a, here's a flip side to this. I had someone on my show yesterday. They were trying to tell me that the serpent was more negative and that archons are, you know, from the Gnostic text, the archons are serpents. So, um, so there's like a divide. Some people think that the serpent knowledge is, is positive. Some people think it's negative. I just kind of want to get your opinion. And, and yeah. So I can only go. So again i have my channel because i wanted to share that what spiritual awakening is is not what new age says it is so you're not doing anything wrong i thought i was doing something wrong so my channel i don't talk about things i don't experience so um i don't read a text and then tell you this is the way it is i do it like i experience it and then i share that experience the gnostic books are so fear-ridden that I don't even they're very dualistic and again remember that was kind of a religion so I I the, the church heavily demonized the serpent now the serpent was the awakener of Adam and Eve giving them the knowledge that there is good and evil in this world kind of letting them know, hey, you, look, you guys are being manipulated in a way because there's Enki, I mean, there's uh, Enlil there trying to manipulate humanity. It it was the serpents, the the awakener and, and giving them knowledge and wisdom. So the church heavily demonized anything that had to do with serpent worship. Um, and you've heard about Matthew LaCroix talking about St. Patrick's Day when he rid the Ireland of snakes. Yeah, that was just were pagans. No there's yeah. no snakes in Ireland, right? So um, it's just part of more of that suppression and people being in fear. But you have to understand we live in an inverted reality right now. So what people think is good or what's been demonized, it's actually kind of, you're going to find that it's the opposite is true. So I, I, I would agree with that. And, and yeah. also what I was going to say about the serpent knowledge, I think in uh, Chris Hardy, she, she was an author. She wrote a book called Wars of the Anunnaki or whatever. And uh, she had a whole chapter in there about Anki serpent knowledge. She said it was the divine knowledge of the Kundalini. And after me having my, I had a Kundalini experience, which was, I, I had it off shrooms. I took shrooms and, you know, I was sitting here all night. And I was like, I was kind of goofing off. I wasn't like, you know, doing it. I was, I intended to have taken them to be spiritual, but then I ended up doing something stupid and I was just like listening to music. But then when I laid down, because I took a little bit of THC too, like a tiny, tiny bit of an edible, you know, I laid down and this buzzing started going up my back. Like I, this is, it was, it, it, so, so it felt like somebody turned a conveyor belt on my back. Uh -huh. And then this energy started going up my back and I had my eyes closed and I could picture the snake going up my back and like yeah. all this, this 
gnosis or what I don't know what it was went into my like, like poured out from my chest like maybe this is my heart chakra poured out of my heart chakra into my pineal gland and then it burst out of my crown and then ever since that happened like my pineal gland and my crown have been buzzing like every day especially like if I'm in a conversation and things are ringing true kind of like it is now like what yeah. we're talking um yeah so like it's given me like a, a cool like kind of bs meter too yeah you know what i mean we like, have to go yeah we have to go past all these written man-made written books I that agree. people because it's written down in a book you know um and the gnostic texts are very fear ridden they're just very they're they're very dualistic and full of fear and they were probably somewhat influenced by again you don't have to be a Christian or be part of an Abrahamic religion to be influenced by it. I mean, I, I was afraid of all this kind of stuff. I didn't know, you know, God's supposed to be up in the sky and all that. Right. But it's actually, it's like an inverted, like even we've been, because it's part of the collective consciousness, we absorb these belief systems, even though we're not part of that faith. And, and so you have to go like throw away the books basically <laughs> and you have to go back so ancient where there was like oral traditions and look into shamanic cultures and indigenous cultures every indigenous culture there's a serpent involved in australia they have the rainbow um, serpent south america and and mexico and everything it's the serpent the ancient Chinese, it's the dragons and the serpents. It's just everywhere, right? And then that's when the church came in and just demolished, burned all the books. You converted or you die. They killed you. They built churches on all these nodes where the temples are on nodes. So anywhere there was a pyramid or a temple or a sacred site, they built a church there, okay? And it's really affected the energy and the ley lines of the earth. The ley lines are also referred to as serpent lines and dragon lines, right? And 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 this the kundalini is a serpent. Look at the look at the caduceus, the healing symbol of doctors. It's two snakes, you know. Uh, and part of it's a huge part of shamanic um, having a shamanic experience. And being swallowed by a snake is like the most privileged thing. Like if it happens to you, a shaman would be like, oh, like it's the best thing. It's, it's, it's that serpent energy and, and you're renewed by that happening, being swallowed by the serpent. Yeah, so again, we, we have to get away. We really have to get away from this Abrahamic religions and any kind of sect that was a, a associated with organized religions and i don't know gnosticism is like very fear-based to me yeah and so well, what are your thoughts on um what are your thoughts on like the whole reincarnation trap theory and the prison planet theory like have you yeah so i ha i made a video about that so you know because somebody asked are we on a prison planet or not and i said yes and no so it's up to you. You can get out of this recycling reincarnation at at any time. It's it's the it's rigged against us and this was kind of a system kind of put in I believe by Enlil. Um and you have to earn your way out of reincarnation. So you have to to wake up, right? And you have to be a good human. You have to have self-discipline. You have to um, have control over your lower instincts, your animal instincts. Now, I I do not deny my humanity at all. I love being a human. I love earth. I love everything about it. But all these impulses, especially, um, you know, always wanting a dopamine hit or um, uh, the adrenaline rush, or every time you have some like sexual urge, you got to go do something with it. You know, it's that kind of, I'm talking that lower animal nature, um, that keeps you like reincarnating, I want to say. So you kind of have to, again, 
like you said, you kind of break out of the matrix, but then you, people think, oh, I'm awake now. I know there's a matrix. They fall into just another one. And they, they think they're like awakened, but it's goes, it's so, it's so much more than that. And as you know, right when you think you figure something out, that theory gets blown out of the water and then another one comes in and then, you know, it's people are like, when is this going to end? When are we, you finally enlightened? I'm like, you never are. It's just a continuous, like you just keep leveling up. And so, yeah, yeah you just keep making new discoveries and you, you change your belief systems. And that's why I got to the point where I have no belief systems. I noticed you don't really talk about like extraterrestrials on your channel. And I, I wonder if it's because maybe you think these things were all coming from a different dimension. Like, okay, for example, like people had like, and, and if you're not, if you don't want to talk about this stuff, it's fine. Cause you know, like, cause I don't know if you touch on this stuff, but it's, I kind of cover it on my channel. So I figured I'd ask you about it. What I'm referring to is like, you know, like I think we can kind of prove that people that were abducted by aliens, like throughout time, Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, like, would you think these entities were coming from another dimension as well? Absolutely. Because, okay. I'll let you explain that. Cause I don't, yeah. I don't So I did have a series of videos talking about this. And I lost a lot of subscribers um, because I don't know why, <laughs> because I shared my experiences with people um, on my channel. That's and so just those have, really have now um, privatized those videos. So well, I have talked about, um, yes, um, I do get taken. Okay, so in the in the past, it's the same thing. They would call them fairies. They'd be like, I got kidnapped and da, da, da. it's the same thing. Now we call it abdu abductions, right? So yes, I've been taken. And this is why I would not go to sleep at night because it happened a lot. And basically, they're able to take you out of your body. And this is why people like I floated through the ceiling and I went out the window is because they're, they're taking you in your spirit body, whatever you want to call it, light body in the new age. Okay. And it feels, I'm telling you when, when another being touches you, it feels just like your physical body. And so I think that's why people get confused. Like I went in my physical body and I can see why they think that is because there's still a boundary there. And when they touch you, when these other dimensional beings touch you, it's not that their hand goes right through you because you're in a different vibration. You still have a barrier there or some type of boundary. So it feels like they're touching you. And so I can see where people get that confusion. Um, so yeah, I've been on ships and I've had procedures done. I have been shown children that I have in other dimensions. Um, but when I started talking about that, I think I lost a lot of people because I was more of like talking about shamanism or primal witchcraft and, and old religion. And then I started talking about that and it freaked people out. So yeah, maybe some people aren't ready to go to those levels. No. Like, yeah. Um, but the thing is, is like the inner worlds have these kind of ships, and I'm not the only one that has said that. Like, if you listen to Admiral Byrd, have you researched him? Oh, yeah, I know. About, yeah, he yeah. talks about, yeah, there's ships in there and, and everything. So I'm not so much a believer that these ships are coming maybe from another galaxy. They could be. But from what I see, they're coming to the surface. And, that's, and they come out and they monitor us. It's part of us, them watching us. And, you know, we're naughty children. Like we like to set off bombs and destroy things. <laughs> and this is why they can shut down nuclear silos. I mean, it's, you know, we're so violent. And, and so after a while I stopped freaking out and resisting it so much and just kind of went with it. I know when I'm being taken, like I, I can't do anything about it. And me freaking out and going into fear, I have never had anything go wrong. They actually perform upgrades on my, um, spirit or energy body and they do procedures and then um, I'll come back and and it'll affect my physical body like they've changed the way that I that I breathe I no longer breathe in my lungs up here I'm sure my lungs are assisting me but they taught me to breathe diaphragmatically they tell me 
when I need to eat something differently, they tell me, they've told me so much advice about sexual energy. And this is why I talk about sexual energy, about it's very, something very sacred and not just to like give it away so easily. And like it's not uh, something to like be a pervert about. Like it's not like yeah, something sacred. But, it's like it's, yeah, it's, but the but the the matrix or whatever, they they pull on all those lower things. That's why there's so much porn and there's so much perversion and involving children and and ridiculous. Yeah, and Did they you ever promote notice they make porn free. Like what it's like what if they weren't trying yeah, to it's part of keeping you in your your lower nature. You know, and you will never ascend what if you you keep doing that kind of stuff. And it's not it's it's you you can't become an ascended master or leave the human kingdom until you've mastered being a human. And so part of that is self-mastery. So you have to have self-mastery over these, you know, I think and people know, you know when you're like, I shouldn't do that. And you do it anyway. I mean, it's just, you know, you'll reconcile that in your next lifetime, you know, but you can get out of this reincarnation cycle. It just takes a lot of work and a lot of self-discipline. And like I've said so many times, like humans are lazy. They don't want to do it. It's too much work. It's not fun. They want to do the fun stuff. You know, they want to get their dopamine hits and adrenaline hits. So it's, I mean, like I said, what, what it's do you up think? to you. You don't have to be locked in here if you don't, you know, if you do the work. But what what, are, what do you think we, we I mean, like what, what state do you think we need to achieve to kind of break out of this? I mean, it's not like being a monk and meditating 20 no. hours a day, right? It's not that. It's like, yeah. it's just like the inner work you're talking about, like the spiritual, like the knowing, the gnosis, but not yeah. in a Gnostic way, but just like yeah. the knowledge way. Is that kind of what you're yeah. saying? Yeah, and, and, Again, a lot of it would be great if if more people could start experiencing this. And I am getting more people being like, thank God I found you because I didn't know what was happening. And and so I'm able to, because they are leaving their body and they're having interactions with beings and everything. So people are popping open and it's because we're having a change of guard. And now, and this is why this, Nobody was really talking about Anunnaki's or serpent knowledge or anything like that, even five years ago, as much as they are now, right? And it's because we're shifting into where, and I was told that Anki is coming back. Now, again, I don't know if he's reincarnating or if his, just because his energy is here now and this knowledge is coming back. But we are definitely shifting. This happens every 26,000 years. And we are going into a new age. And so this, I, I've always said, we are going through an age of revelations. Like everything's going to be revealed. And this is why so many things are coming out like in the news and we're finding out about Hollywood and corruption and these elite families. Like nobody knew any of that stuff 10 years ago, you know? <laughs> and so it's, um, it's happening and these energies are very intense. Like I said, there's people are really struggling with them and they're going to continue to get more intense. And if you don't go with it, you're going to short circuit. People are going to, you know, they're going bonkers and crazy and doing crazy things, but it's part of evolution and it's activating a lot of people. And so if people don't know what's happening, they're going to think they're going crazy and not knowing that they're going through a spiritual transformation. And that is basically, again, why I had my channel. I thought I was doing everything wrong because I, in new age, because that's the only place you go first, you go to new age. It's supposed to be beautiful and everything and, you know, blah, blah, blah. and it wasn't like that at all. And most people that I know that are having a genuine spiritual awakening it's you get ptsd from it it's traumatizing <laughs> yeah no I, I agree and i think that's what i think also i don't think when i was talking to you before the show before we started recording i was saying that you know i manifested these pains i think that could have been like spiritual ascension type pains too. oh yeah like, because you know it's weird that i had the like the the buzzing in the pineal gland and the and i had all these different things happening i was seeing the number sequences all the time i still am 
you know, I'm always seeing like one, one, one or two, two, two on a receipt or on a clock or whatever, like 11, yeah. 11, you know, it's, uh, um, so, and it's, and like my psychic abilities of like, you know, I can't do readings for people, but I, you know, I'm pretty intuitive. Um, so like, I'm, I'm just coming into my own, I'm coming into my powers, I think. But like, what I was saying with that is I think maybe like you can get ascension pains too. Like, oh my God, physical pains. Is that kind of what happened? Physical I can't tell you how many, especially when this chakra opens on the back of your neck. Um, I would go to the emergency room and I was in so much pain. I just wanted to die. Like then to, and it, it's a headache that's up here and they would give me narcotics and they'd come in and check on me and I would still be awake. And they're like, you should be out. And I'm like, nope. And they give me more and it wouldn't do anything. I had to actually go and get a deep tissue massage and and that would help them go away. Nothing else. I couldn't take drugs or narcotics or anything. I had to have someone that could get in there and work, you know, with that. I wasn't going in there thinking, oh, I need an energy healer or anything. But I think that's kind of what was happening. And I'm very picky about who touches me when I get, a, you know, any type of massage. I have to be like, really feel them out. And, and that's the only thing. Um, I've had so many like health crisis is happening. Um, people always say, oh, after I was hospitalized, everything changed and I'm like a different person. And that is also a shamanic initiation. If you go back in indigenous cultures, uh, when you come close to death, the other world's opening because when you transition, you go to the astral realm first. And if you can pass beyond the astral realm, you are open to the the bliss, the more heavenly places, but you go to the other world. Right. And so when, when, and this is what vision quests do. And when you fast for a long time, you're like on death's door. So these dimensions start getting really thin, the, the, the veil between them. And so when you get sick, um, especially in shamanic cultures, some of them, they're shamans afterwards because they survived the death. And they came so close that the other world, the veil just kind of ripped open and now they have access there. So, so it's not that. unusual to go through health crisis, um, crises when you are having, you know, uh, when you're leveling up, you may have another one, you know, and, and there's a, there's a lot of sleeping involved. There's a lot of resting because what, what's happening is these energies are coming in cosmic and the sun and it's hitting earth. And then the earth kind of spits them back up and then it affects humanity, especially if you go outdoors into nature. And if you don't have shoes on, there's chakras at the bottom of your feet and the energy is coming up through that. And so it's very intense and our bodies are so dense and we're not used to this higher vibrational, you know, it's the Schumann resonance goes off the charts. And it can make you, give you vertigo. You can get nauseous and you're going to want to sleep a lot <laughs> or it's so disturbing that you can't sleep. So you'll go through these different, but the, it's really important that you take naps and not see, oh, I'm just being lazy or anything like that. It's an, it's, it's an ascension symptom is tiredness and vertigo and nausea and the buzzing you talked about. So when I first when that incident, I told you when I was forced out of, taken out of my body and I was looking at my body and I went to Avicii, the, the void. Um, it started with the sound of like a swarm of like bees. And then it went to like a high pitched drill sound. And, and so it was like an increase of the vibration started out slow and then it went super high speed. Um, and then, yeah, that's when I was just ejected and I just feel like I was yanked out of my body. And then after that, like all, like the energy just went shoot through all my chakras, my Kundalini opened like super rapidly. I wouldn't suggest that for anybody, like trying to force open your chakras, let it have, I mean, I didn't force it, but whatever happened to me, force them open, like be gentle. <laughs> yeah. Cause you're going to go, you could go psychotic. I mean, it's nuts how it affects you. Well, this has been fascinating. I was I've been, the last couple of minutes we have. I have another show I have to do at eight. But um, I, I was going to say, can you tell the people like because I know I checked your website. You have a a lot of different services you provide. I was going to see if you wanted to tell the people about your website 
and and a couple of the services you offer. And thank you so much for doing this. This was awesome. Oh yeah, it was great. It went by fast. It did. Um, yeah. So I only offer things that I've experienced or like I've done myself that has helped that helped me through the transition. So I can like train like how to do incubation, which is a really ancient technique. I came up with it in my like thinking I did it on my own. And then I realized it's a shamanic, it's a very ancient shamanic technique that opened a lot of things for me doing a mantra. Um, I did that and that's really transformational. So I do that according to your birthday. And then um, I do clearings. If you people take on a lot of attachments, I want to say that's how I see them. And they're stuck in like your energy body. I can help clear those. I mean, together we're doing it. And then I'm able to speak a language of the other world. And so I can do that during the session. And that opens up things and makes more connections. And like one, once, yeah, I have counseling sessions. I, I have different things. I do tarot readings, divination. I love divination. That's part of the other world instructed me to do divination. I didn't come up with that on my own. I was afraid of the tarot actually. Um, until I was given those like instructions um, to do that and a vision. So yeah, it's, it's all things that I practiced myself. And now I only do things that I've experienced and I know it made shifts in me. And so I, I recommend those to other people. That's cool. That's cool. Well, um, can you tell everybody the name of your website and, uh, and thank you. So again, thank you so much. Yeah. This really cool. Yeah. So my YouTube channel is uh, the peculiar daughter. My website is the, the peculiar daughter.com. I have a Patreon where I do live Q and A's and, um, there's course free courses on, well, not free, but if you're on a certain level, you get a tarot course, a rune course, dousing course. Um, we talk a lot about one of the big things that a lot of us incarnated to do is work on the land and repair the lines that atrophied because churches were put on, on all the nodes and it atrophied the lines. Um, those are waking back up and that's affecting consciousness of the people. And so, yeah, we're doing a lot of work on the land and yeah, just share, I just share whatever's happening, but I share a lot of what I've gone through because I said, I know I'm not the only one. So I got to start talking about this. And then other people are like, okay, yeah, that's what I'm going through. This makes sense. And, and, and stuff like that. I'm just sharing my experiences. It's not like, I'm talking about books and ancient things like that. It's just pretty much, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's good because it's stuff knowledge. that people relate to because they're going through the same thing as you. So I can see yeah. why people, a lot of people would relate to you. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, again, uh, thank you so much. And uh, we'll have to do this again. I'll send you a link when I upload it. Yeah, perfect. All right, thanks. Have okay. Take care. Thanks.